All right, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us today to be in the presence of your Son. For he has promised that for two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So we walk you, Lord Jesus. We praise and honor and glorify you. And as we come into your presence, Lord Jesus, we just ask that whatever is of sin or temptation of the flesh, the devil will fall to the ground and die, and be of no effect so that we're completely available to all that you have for us now. And let the word of my mouth and the attention of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, our strength and our need. Amen. Grace to your peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis, but also in Matthew, we are reminded that the devil is a tempter. He is someone who will invite you to reject God's word, to question it, to doubt it, and then to do your own thing, to find your own way, to make your own life as opposed to following the will and the word of God. And it's important that we see something here because it really is critical if we're going to overcome temptation. Because as long as we are living on planet Earth, we are going to have to deal with temptation. That is the enemy's chief weapon, temptation. The first thing we need to see, and it's very critical, is that while temptation is an invitation to walk away from God and sin, temptation is not itself sin. In other words, it's very important for us to say and understand that while the devil might invite you to sin, you don't have to accept the invitation. You don't have to accept the invitation to rebel and then fall into sin. Temptation and sin are two different things. We might be tempted, but we don't have to accept it and then go ahead and sin. And today, we are shown in these two lessons what we need to do in order to overcome temptation and have victory over it so that we do not walk in rebellion, but walk in victory over temptation. And there are three things in particular that we need to see if we're going to have victory over temptation. The first thing we need to see is that when temptation comes, the one thing we don't want to do is meditate on the temptation. You see, the devil came and he talked with Eve and he told her that, you know what, you're not going to die if you eat that fruit. It will make you wise. And God is really trying to keep you from your full potential. So go ahead and eat it. It'll be all right. And then what did she start to do? Well, then she looked at the tree and she started to meditate on that temptation. Well, it looks good. Smells good. It's good to make us wise. And she began to meditate on the temptation that the devil gave her. And you know what the problem meditating on it is? As soon as you start thinking about it and considering it, you're going to go do it. Whatever you think about and meditate on, that is what you are going to put into action. You know what the difference was between Eve and her work with temptation and Jesus and his having to deal with temptation? Jesus didn't meditate on the temptation. When the devil came with the temptation, what's the first thing he did? He meditated on the word. Because every temptation you hear from the devil is a lie. Because he's a liar and a murderer and he wants to bring you down. Whereas God, when he speaks, he is life and he wants you to have life and to have his blessing in your life. He is telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if Jesus throughout his earthly life, meditated on God's word and did not meditate on the lies that the devil would throw at him. That's very important for us to see. Because if we are going to have victory over temptation, then we need, need to do what Jesus did and not what Eve and Adam did. 
We need to meditate on the truth of God's Word and not meditate, think about, and consider the lie that the devil brings into our lives. That's the first way that we overcome temptation. But there's another thing that we need to see here too. The second way we overcome temptation is this. You know, our Lord Jesus is the Son of God, isn't he? He's God of flesh. And yet, while he was walking on this earth, the devil was going to bombard him with temptation. That is just what it means to live in a broken world. And yet, when Jesus met the temptation, the one thing he didn't do was this. He didn't get all fearful and think, wow, I'm about to fall into sin. That's not what he thought. You know what he did? He saw that as an opportunity to say yes to God and no to the devil. He saw it as an opportunity to exercise his faith and not exercise faith in sense. He saw it as an opportunity to kick the devil to the curb and show him who was really in charge. And that's what we need to understand. When temptation comes on the quill, we need to not be afraid of that temptation. Let me just add one more thing. That doesn't mean you go look for temptation. But when it does come, you don't be afraid of it. Don't get fearful and think, wow, I'm going to fall into sin. Instead, see that as an opportunity to stand in your faith, exercise it, say yes to God, and no to the devil. And you know what happens when you say yes to God and no to the devil on a continuous basis? You are growing in holiness. You're growing in holy character. You're becoming more and more like Jesus and less and less like the, the rebel of the old nature. The evil one means to do you harm. But God is going to use that time of temptation if you will stand in faith. He will use that time of temptation for good and to bring you into a greater place with Him as you become more and more like Jesus. Surrendering to the Father and to His Word and saying no to what the enemy has to say. It's very important that we see that. Temptation is an opportunity. An opportunity not to fall, but an opportunity to exercise your faith and to grow in faith, love, and obedience and holiness to the Lord. If you want a holy life, then there's one thing you need to understand. You're going to have to stand up in temptation and say yes to God and no to the devil. And let me just say one other thing with regards to that. If you're going to say no to the devil, and by the way, does everybody agree it's a good idea to say no to the devil? It's a good idea. It's wonderful. When you say no to the devil, make your no convincing. Make it convincing. You see, let me just give you this example. You know, if a salesman comes knocking on your door and he has a spiel to tell you, and you keep that door open and you're listening, even though you said no, you know what that means? They know that you actually mean yes. There's a yes in there. And they're going to keep going after you until they get the sale. However, if they come to the door and you say, no, boom. Guess what? They know you meant no. And they'll go away. Make your no convincing. In other words, say no and walk away from it. Say no and shut the door. Say no to no, no uncertain terms. I am not convincible. I'm not open for business for you. Get away. That's what we need to understand. When we're going to say no, we need to be convincing about it. No. I'll follow Jesus. No. I want his word, not yours. No. I'm not interested in your life, Satan. I'm interested in the truth of God. And make it convincing. Now, the third thing we need to see here, because it's also very, very important, is that if you're going to stand against temptation and have victory, that you need to use the weapons God gives you. And the chief weapon that He gives you is the Word of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, we are told very clearly when we're talking about spiritual warfare, temptation is part of spiritual warfare. We are told very, very clearly in Ephesians 6 
that we have one major weapon that we need to use all the time. It's called the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So in other words, if you're going to overcome temptation, overcome the devil, you're not going to overcome him by arguing with him according to your own wisdom. Because he has an answer for you. But if you come with the Word of God, he has no answer to God's Word. That's why we see in Matthew chapter 4 that our Lord Jesus was constantly quoting what? The Word of God. He was saying to the devil, it is written. It is written. It is written. So when the devil is tempting you, what do you need to do? Well, you need to quote Scripture and say, this is what God says. You're lying. This is what God says. You're lying. This is what God says. And keep at it. Because the devil didn't just stop with one temptation. He persisted. We need to be persistent. Whenever he comes with a lie, he comes with the truth. But there's one more thing that I want to share with you because it's also very important. And it's this. If you are going to fight the devil with the word of God, I want to show you something very important. I've done this before, but I hope we get it again. This is the Bible. It's the Word of God. The first word of Genesis and the last word of Revelation. It is the inspired and errant foul word of God. But I want to tell you something very important. The devil is not a vampire. It does no good to just have this hanging around your house or have it like this. You go like that and then you expect the devil to run. That's not how this weapon works. See, if you have a gun in your nightstand and there's an enemy going to come, that gun does no good in the nightstand until you pick it up, load it, and point it. Right? A Bible sitting on the shelf or sitting on the table is not going to do the job. The Word of God is a weapon when you meditate on this word and then speak out that word against the devil. That's how you grab hold of that weapon and use it. Because the word in the Greek that says word of God there actually means the spoken word. So in other words, it's a word, you meditate on the word, and then you find the word that, that will help against that temptation, then you speak it out against the enemy. For example, let's say that you're being tempted to believe that you have nothing left to live for. If nothing's going to work. You're no one. No one loves you. You might as well give up. What would you do? Well, there's a scripture that answers that. It is written. See what love the Father has for me, that I should be called a child of God. And that is what I am. And so when you're being tempted one way, you find the word of God and you speak it out and say, no, this is what God says. That's how that weapon is used. We have to speak out the word. Because that is when it becomes a sharp sword that the devil can't answer. And again, you need to be persistent. Because you're a girl with an enemy that wants to take you down. So as persistent as he is, you need to be more persistent. That is why St. Paul says in his letter today, you need to be persistent. You need to hold fast. Stand firm. You're going to win this thing. You don't like this. Christ has already won. You're just a portion of the victory. Praise God. Amen. So today, understand... As long as we are living in this life, we are in spiritual warfare. We are dealing with an enemy that wants to bring us down. The chief thing he does is tempt us. Tempt us to not believe the word and to do our own thing. Now, if you are being tempted, you haven't sinned yet. And the way to overcome temptation is to meditate on the word and see that temptation as an opportunity to kick the devil's butt. By your exercising faith. And then use the weapons that God has given you. And that's the word of God spoken out to be the lie of the enemy. We can overcome temptation. And let me say it right now. 
I think we all agree. Uh, and this is just an experiential thing. But it's so much easier on yourself to overcome temptation than to deal with the condemnation of having fallen into sin. So much easier on yourself to deal with it early than to have to deal with it late. Deal with it early. Nip it in the bud. Destroy the temptation while it's young so that it doesn't grow in you to be something that leads us into sin. Let's pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, just thank you that you have given us what we need to know so that we can overcome temptation and live the holiness of life. Father, we ask now in Jesus' name, by your Holy Spirit, that you give us your grace more and more to overcome the enemy, to enforce the victory, and to lead people to the knowledge of salvation. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.